Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome to episode 3 of The Boston Project. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new to the channel, thank you for tuning in. If you are not new, if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Here's the series in which I catch up with you on what has happened the last week or week and a half with my training to qualify for Boston. Okay, so first things first, we are going to address the elephant in the room. I have a different background. Let me know in the comments below if you like this background better than the other one that's more like brown, I would guess, light brown. I don't know, I can't see colors, guys. So, would you let me know if you like this one, the green, or the prior color that I used in past videos. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to actually recap two weeks. Um, even though it's episode three, we're going to do the two final weeks of January. And I have all the information right here. Most of the runs I did on the treadmill, just because it's been like an insanely cold January, or maybe not insanely, but it's generally speaking here in Pennsylvania, um, the month of January and as well as February, they're pretty cold. So I did most of my runs indoors. In addition to that, we had this challenge going on on Swift with the Swift long distance runners. And I wanted to earn as many points as possible with my team, which really made me very um, eager to just put all my training runs on the platform on Swift. So let's start reviewing all these different runs. Okay, week number three, I did 45 miles. It was exactly the amount of miles that I wanted to hit. I wanted to fall there in between 44, 47, 48 miles, and I did 45 miles, so kudos to me. And the last week in January, I did 43 miles, which also fell within the guidelines that I had put for myself. Okay, so let's start with the week of President's Day, which is January 18th. On the 19th, I went on Swift early in the morning, first thing, <laughs> even before starting work at seven in the morning, I did 6.23 miles and I did 10 minutes, 42 seconds. Um, this was a lot of fun because it was one of these extra runs that we do on Swift for the challenge with the ZLDR. So um, that, was, that was a lot of fun because there's always people chatting with each other and communicating and we play music on Discord and it's just, it's always a lot of fun. It's very social. So then on the 20th, on Wednesday, I did another run on the treadmill with the CLDR and this was 6.2 miles, 10 miles and 10 minute miles and four seconds. Um, I ran with um, Cecily most of the time. I met her through Swift, we're friends on Instagram and two on Facebook. We um, continued chatting and we ran the whole way, all 6.2 miles together, which was a lot of fun. On the 21st, I ran a 5K, 3.1 miles, and I ran, ran in 29 minutes and change, which was great. 9 minutes, 36 seconds per mile. And I ran with the ZLDRs again, but I didn't really run together, you know, alongside with anybody. I just ran with a bunch of people. Then on the 21st, I did double duty, actually. I did the 5K before with the ZLDRs. And then I did stage four of the Tour de Swift. I'm trying to accomplish as many as I can. Um, right now, I think I have seven of the eight, so I should be able to complete the whole Tour de Swift challenge and what you get is just a new outfit for your avatar which is always fun um this one i took it really 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 easy because it was the second run of the day and that was um i ran the five kilometers in 40 minutes almost 41 minutes so i took it really really easy okay moving on to the 22nd on the 22nd i ran several times this was a day that I was very very busy with work and i just fit in i wanted to do six miles and i just you know, basically did three different runs. So the first run was at, um, let me see if I have this right. Uh, the first one was 2.5 miles, 11 minute per mile pace. And I did 
I was trying to do a 5K, but I couldn't do the 5K because I was, again, busy with work. They were calling me and I had to pick up the phone and so I had to step off of the treadmill. That was at 1.39 p.m. So I was, you know, I'm flexible with my lunch time. So that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to put my run during lunch, my lunch break. Um, on that same day, the 22nd, a little bit after that, after I answered that call, I was able to put a, an interval training, but it was only 1.8 miles. Again, it was just, I couldn't finish the whole thing. This was a really fun interval run. It's with the group called Pack on Swift. And then later that night at 5, um, 10 p.m. at night on the 22nd, I tried to do stage four, which I didn't finish. I was way too tired and I just didn't finish stage four. So, okay, the 23rd, moving on. Five miles, almost a little bit um, under the 11 minute miles. This was the weekly run. And this, I think this was intended to be six miles. I didn't finish the six miles, I only did five. Um, then on the 23, the 23rd, we have the 13.1 miles. This is the half marathon that did Swift long distance runners host on Swift. I wasn't able to finish because my, um, if I don't remember incorrectly here, my, I want to say my, I want to say Swift kicked me out. Yes, Swift kicked me out. So I managed to do nine miles 20 and, and I was running really, really fast. I was doing nine minute 28 seconds um, per mile pace. And then I continue running and I run by myself a little bit more than that. Okay, on the 24th, I took a very long walk with my dog. It was so cold. It was scary how cold it was. Okay, on the 25th, this was probably the fastest run that I did these two weeks. Um, I ran 6.25 miles. This was the Tour de Swift stage five. And I run them in nine minute twin nine minutes sixteen seconds per mile. So this was pretty fast. I'm pretty proud of this accomplishment. And Strava said I did that. Oh, so I got my third fastest time in a 10k, and it was 57 minutes and change. That's amazing. That was really good, guys. Beautiful progressive run. I started slower. I started around the 10 minute, 30 second pace. And then I ended over like at right around the eight minute, 20 second pace in the last mile. So I am super, super proud of this run. Okay, moving on to the 26th. On the 26th, I did 3.17 miles. I did them right under the 10 minute mile. So like 31 minutes and I did them with a packed social 5k run. This is another group on Swift. There's different like running clubs on Swift. I belong to the ZLDRs, but I run sometimes with the packs out as well. So and this was a lot of fun, this run. Um, then on the 27th at 4 p.m., I took my lunch time. I, again, I'm very flexible with my lunch break. So I took my lunch break at four and I ran 6.28 miles at 10 minute 18 seconds per mile and then on the 28th i ran with the lonely goat running club i really wanted to give this one a try it's a progression run um i actually filmed this for my youtube channel i don't think i'm gonna come back to this running club i mean every single running club and swift is a little bit different so i just didn't enjoy running with these people um but I ran almost three miles and the average minute per mile was nine minutes, two seconds. The 28th, I did a, um, I joined another event with the ZLDRs, but I only ran 1.5 miles and I don't remember why actually. I only ran, I think I got disconnected because I see here that then immediately after that, I ran another half a mile. So, and then on the 29th, I did a walk, and this is a walk that the um, ZLDRs organized on Fridays, most Fridays anyway, and it's called the Zombie Crawl, and that's what I did. I did the Zombie Crawl. It was 30 minutes, and it's it's time, so it's only 30 minutes, so I managed to do 
1.55 miles. But again, I was going like run, walk, run, walk. I was really tired this day. On the 30th, we had a really fun event for the challenge, for the CLDR challenge that was taking place in January. And we had to do on the on Mayfield, which is the track inside Watopia, inside the world on Swift. Um, we had to run for 30 minutes and pass the baton to another member of your group. So each group has 14 runners. I had to receive the baton from someone else and then pass it along to someone else. This was a lot of fun, just this event. I had to run twice. I ran the first time at 9.30, I believe. No, at 9, the first time I ran at 10 in the morning. And then the second time I ran, um, I'm trying to find it here. And then the second time I ran at 11.30. So yeah, and that one day overall I did seven miles because I ran in between those two segments that I had to run for my relays I ran in between those as well and then finally on the 31st uh, which is the last obviously the 31st last day of the month um, I ran a warm-up of 3.4 miles very slow it took me 43 minutes to do 3.4 miles and then I ran pretty quick, pretty fast, nine minute miles. I ran 10 miles right after that. And then I cooled off uh, after that. So I did a total of 14 miles, which was my longest run in the year, but it's also my longest run, I think in probably two years, to be honest with you guys. Overall, the last two weeks of January were phenomenal. Nothing was hurting. Nothing was bothering me. I felt strong. I was able to switch gears in between going faster in certain runs and then going at a very easy pace for other runs, which I think is important. It's important not to get carried away with your pace. I've been running pretty strong, pretty fast. I am really happy with where things are going. I now just have to keep it up because the intention, as you guys know, if you've been following me and if you have watched episodes one and two, my intent is to run a marathon in the fall that if I don't get to qualify for Boston, I, at least I get closer. I get a finishing time that gets me closer to Boston. I have a long way to go because my PR in a marathon is four hours and 57 minutes. However, that time is from 2018 and I have gotten much, much faster. I just haven't run any other marathon after Philadelphia Marathon in November 2018. So um, that's why this upcoming marathon is going to be very important and it's going to be a major data point for me to know if I have what it takes to qualify for Boston. Now, in terms of diet, you guys know that I am a vegetarian right now, so I'm not eating meat. Things are going really well. I don't miss not having meat, to be honest with you guys. The only thing is that I have to cook meat for my husband and my son. We're not vegetarians, but so far, so good. It's not a huge challenge. Um, and I've been logging all my food just to make sure that I'm eating the right amount of protein. I've been logging in everything on my fitness pal and actually I have learned really interesting things um, and it's that on average I eat 1750 calories which I'm pretty average and regular with the calories that I eat every single day and usually even with how much I'm running I'm really surprised at how economical my body is because I'm only burning just about 1900 calories per day. So, <laughs> so it's really interesting to see how economical my body is, which really is what you want for long distance running, right? You want to be able to not burn a lot of cal calories when you're running 26.2. You're able, if you were able to run 26.2 miles and only burn 300 calories, which is not possible, but if you were able to do that, that would be amazing. So 
but it was just it it's interesting to take a look at the data and analyze it and see how things are steady over time i, I was really surprised to see that that's kind of the average amount of calories that i always consume 1750 so um, also, I am doing really well with the protein intake, even though I am a vegetarian, I don't have any issues with uh, my protein intake. Most days I'm eating 80 grams of protein, which is great, and about 250 to 260 grams of carbs. Then sleep. Sleep has been a struggle. Um, I intended to try and sleep more hours and I have been gravitating around the 7 hours 30 minutes the whole two weeks. So um, I'm just trying hard to go to bed earlier and try and be relaxed and not be distressed. But it's it's been a challenge because I'm very overworked. Just work is like since the beginning of the year it's been very stressful and we have a lot of just administrative things coming you know to me and you know to my peers my counterparts so it's been kind of a struggle um but hopefully that changes in february is better and um i just want to focus right now on staying at that 45 mile mark for the week i'm going to incorporate more strength training for february um, i want to have two sessions of strength training per week and not decrease the amount of miles that I'm running. So we'll see if I can make that happen. It's going to require a little bit of patchwork with my schedule, but I think it's doable. And um, I'm gonna continue being a vegetarian. Just, um, I just really wanna give it a go for health reasons. I think once you turn a certain age, I think it's better to, I think it's good to have a diet that's reasonable, is lower in saturated fat and all of that. I don't want to make turn this video into like a diet video. So I can talk about that in a future video if you guys are interested in that. January has been a great month. Um, I feel strong and I hope that I can continue doing this. Again, my focus for February is introducing two strength training sessions per week keep my mileage at 45 and not get injured which is the main goal i think of every single runner isn't it <laughs> um if you made it all the way till the end of the video you guys are champions i love you and don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already run fearless you guys Bing. stuck in chains all this time with you i took the pain knew that it was wrong to stay so it's